You've ripped your way through Guitar Hero Metallica and Guitar Hero Aerosmith and Guitar Hero Van Halen, and you're holding out for the previously announced but still unreleased Guitar Hero Red Hot Chili Peppers. But if you're really serious about likeness, license, abusing nonsense, you own all of the Michael Jackson games, both 50 Cent games, and Journey's Escape. Long before Ringo Starr's plastic drums were piled up in the corner of your living room, OG developers like Midway and Ocean were trying to shoehorn popular musical artists into their games in order to gain an edge in the arcade. But it was Data Age, creator of the Atari Megabomb Snake, who claimed console first blood with this other non-classic. Released in 1982 for the Atari 2600, Journey's Escape finds you dodging, quote, love-crazed groupies as you make your way to the Journey Tour Bus, which is a giant scarab beetle. Along the way, you gain invincibility by either touching your roadies or your manager, who is a Kool-Aid man. Midway released another Journey game only one year later, this time with a band looking for their instruments in outer space. Ocean developed a game based around Frankie Goes to Hollywood in 1985. You know. That band. The game, creatively titled Frankie Goes to Hollywood, tasks you with making your way to the mythical Pleasure Dome by fully attaining four attributes, sex, love, war, and faith. You also have to bring an atheist murderer to justice. Who knows? With the growth of PC gaming and eventually CD-ROMs, these games all started to eventually just be exactly like Myst. You know, mysterious and full of puzzles and all weird visual atmospherics. Myst. Hey friend, that's my hat. Written by Devo, Devo Presents Adventures of the Smart Patrol drops players into Spudland, which is under risk of great destruction from Turkey Monkey. It is not a very good game, but it is very Devo. Prince's Interactive is another Myst-style weirdness trove. You walk around Paisley Park and solve puzzles in order to collect pieces of Prince's symbol. But the best of this era is Bad Day on the Midway, a legitimately groundbreaking piece of multimedia art gaming from those avant-garde, eyeball-wearing weirdos, The Residents. At one point, this game was optioned by Ron Howard with the intent of making a television series to be directed by David Lynch. This never happened, but this would have been awesome. Most of these games are cash-ins. Spice Girls, Blues Brothers, every single Def Jam game. But some, nay, one. Rise above camp, rise above art to become a genuine console classic. I am speaking, of course, about the Sega Genesis version of Moonwalker. Based on the very awesome Michael Jackson Moonwalker film, this game is insanely magic. You get to dance in order to defeat your enemies, and sometimes they join you to dance. You get to hang out with Bubbles the Chimp, and you turn into a robot. And eventually, a plane. All while seeking out children, the primary objective of the game. It was a more innocent time. Michael Jackson ended up starring in a variety of games, but I think we should save Space Channel 5 and the seemingly aborted Planet Michael for another time. Plus there's the Wu-Tang fighting game, and the Aerosmith rail shooter, and Iron Maiden's Ed Hunter, and the Motley Crue pinball game, and the Kiss first person shooter, and... Who's bad? 
What's your favorite musician themed game? Let us know in the comments and be sure to check out the description for tons of Let's Play videos involving a diddler and his chimp, plus everything else we've used in this episode. Subscribe for more episodes of This Exists every week and don't stop believing. Bye.